-hmm. Secularity is saying, are you familiar with the Pandora Papers? Do you think there is an effective method to prevent people from hiding money slash hoarding wealth in this manner? And Secularity also said, also, as always, I love what y'all do. So thank you, uh, Secularity. Thank you. Um, Armin, you go first. Yeah. Okay, so for do you want to first explain to people what happened with the Pandora Papers? Like this is the most recent leak about people, rich people and powerful people's monies that came out, and it just showed that, you know, as we expect again, just like um, you know, we had before, like a, the Panama Papers, right? And but the Paradise one, Papers. Yes. So, so now we have the Pandora Papers, which basically unearthed a lot of information about where the rich uh, including tony blair apparently um and also shakira where they hide their money offshore and how much uh, to avoid paying taxes right um so that's for people who might not know what's going on so a couple of things about it the question is like is there an effective method to prevent people from hiding money before i um address that i just want to mention how this is how something like this should be. I don't understand why more people don't see this as an obvious way for right leaning people and left leaning people to unite with each other. Because when we're talking about taxing rich people, right? A lot of people are like, oh, we should tax them more. We should tax them the same. But, oh, we're already taxing them too much. Uh, they're already paying for most of the things. And the, the, the seems to be the discussion should, is between whether the tax on the rich should be, you know, a flat, you know, the same as the, the same percentage as other people, which makes it more anyways, because they're making more money, or should be should it become progressively more as you make more money, like, as you, as you get entered to other tax brackets. But what we see the reality as underground when it comes to like, or like, leaks like this and obviously all, all the other information we already have is that the rich people and powerful people actually pay less taxes because there's so many ways for you to legally not always illegally some of these are illegal but a lot of it is also legally there are so many loopholes for you to be, be able to not pay your taxes like not pay taxes right so and on this i think everybody should agree that this doesn't make sense, right? So the discussion seems everybody makes it seem like the discussion is bit whether rich people should make pay more taxes or the same taxes um, as if everyone else. But I think everybody agrees that it shouldn't be less taxes than poor, like than average or poor people, because that's what it's happening. Like rich people actually, and, and even on a percentage basis, because of all the loopholes that exist, it can find ways to not pay the tax. So even the people who think that we shouldn't, the taxes shouldn't be so high because it will make money, you know, run away. Um, and, you know, your country will suffer because people are not investing in your country. I think even they should agree, they agree that, well, they can't just not, they can be these loopholes, right? Uh, they, they, these loopholes cannot exist. Like, there should, like, at least the percentage needs to be the same, at least. And I think on in this, people so much agree on, but on... It's amazing that on this thing that everybody agrees on, we can't do anything about it because um, the people who have the power and have the money are also the people who get to set the rules, right? So when you ask, is, is there an effective method? I, I don't think there can be an effective method because the things that you can change is the laws in your country. And you can't change the laws in other countries, right? So the issue with these tax havens are, is that if you like try to close all the loopholes and make the system more fair, and also like investigate to make sure like nobody's like, whatever you do, what it, if, it, if, it, if it's actually effective, it's going to encourage people to take their money to other countries. And anyways, like, and other countries are going to take advantage of the fact that you are closing the loopholes and making sure everybody is paying their fair share to to signal to the rich people like you know what bring your money here right because it will be such an attractive magnet for investments 
uh, by these other places that want to advertise themselves as a tax haven. Like you cannot, it's not like there's no international rule for like, oh, you have to play by these rules, by this game. And, and, and they can't be because you don't have, you can't force other countries. Like, this is not like a human rights issue where you're like, oh, you have to abide by these standards. Like, what you're gonna now tell us what our tax code should be like? You can't like you can't force this upon other countries, right? So I don't really know what you can do with this because if you're like, oh, we need to tax the rich and we need to close the loophole and we need to make things more fair, or like, well, you can do that for your country. You can't do that everywhere else. And as long as other places get to set their own rule, the more fair you make it, the more they're gonna take advantage of of uh, of attracting your rich. And sucking, and what what that's going to do? Like a lot of people think, like this is about fairness. It's just about fairness. It's not just about fairness. It's also about the, if the rich decide to take their money out, out elsewhere, your economy is going to suffer. You may be like, well, that's not fair. Well, but it's how it is. Like if you don't find a way for the rich to decide to keep their money in this country, you know, investments, you know, capital is going to leave. And you need that to survive. You can't just like you can't rely on the taxes that of average people. Most like that's a major revenue. That that stuff pays for your roads and your schools and everything, right? Um, so I don't I don't think there is a solution actually. Like I, I'm I'm hit. I mean I'm sorry for being pessimistic at all. Um, I can't think of a solution. Um, do you? Can you think of a solution, Sus? Well. No, for all the reasons you listed. Like when I think about this, I think of this YouTuber. I think his name is No Nomad Nomad Capitalist, and mm -hmm. he always says like, "Go where you are treated best. Like take your yeah, money yeah. where you're treated best. Like basically, you can go country shopping if you have the means. Yeah, yeah. To where your money is treated the best in the way that you want, and so. You know, it was interesting. Um, the question is, you know, like, are there solutions or a way to um, prevent this? And I watched um, like a one hour special about the Pandora Papers, specifically in regards to Australia. And I talked about like all these holes in the Australian system, how they are way behind other countries in terms of trying to ameliorate these problems or mitigate them in terms of like legislation and regulation or also just oversight. Um, and it was really interesting, but the whole special made me think like, people are always gonna be incentivized to do this. Like, I don't find it surprising. I think it's to be expected or maybe, mm it's just because I've grown up in an era where this is like, well known, like, my childhood was like the financial crash, you know, and all the stuff that will fall out from that. Mm. I feel like maybe that influenced my just assumption that this is just like, of course, it's this way. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it is expected. This is just confirms it. Um, you're right. Um, I do want to address this. Nix is saying, but I don't see anything wrong with it because it's their money. Uh, they worked for it. Well, I don't think you understand the issue, Nix. Here, the issue is that the middle class and poor people also work for their money, but if they are paying more taxes <laughs> um, compared to, you know, I mean, again, it's not all rich people. Like, especially rich people that make their money off of salaries rather than investment, they're paying like a lot of taxes. And rich, you know, a lot of rich people are getting taxed a lot and it's actually most of their money that is paying for stuff but again for the people who manage to find ways to go you know to go around you know to not pay a lot of taxes or take advantage of tax havens or blah 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 it's just not fair because they are one reason why they're getting rich is because of the the use the infrastructure that exists um through the infrastructure that was paid for by taxes, right? So it's not like you're like, it's, it's their money, they work for it. Well, they work for it using everything that the tax taxes pay for, like with the roads and the internet and all the 
as you know, healthcare and the science. Not to mention like subsidy. Yeah, publicly funded research and everything. Um, you know, you can't just be like uh, take advantage of that and not pay your fair share, especially if people less rich than you are paying their share to create the infrastructure that now you are using to get rich from, right? So I don't think, um, but I don't know if we should keep thinking about this from a, you know, a few fairness perspective, because that doesn't get us the best utilitarian calculation for what is best for society. Because you might argue that, you know what, even if it's not fair, if we want to keep the rich money in our country so that investment grows, we might have to just accept that things are not fair. <laughs> I know this is going to make me very unpopular because it just sounds really wrong, but maybe like people will have to come up with the, again, I'm just thinking about this. Don't come at me. Okay. But people might decide that like, you know what, we need the rich and they and screw them and they are abused. This is unfair, but we have to appease them just to make sure that they keep the money in, investing in industries that was feeding everybody right again oh. hey, this is this sounds really um yeah i know look at gross. this liberal dribble <laughs> <laughs> okay shit. i'm just i'm just i'm just thinking out loud okay just come at me i don't know i'm just saying that do you want things to be fair or do you want things to work sometimes some sometimes they're the same thing sometimes they're not right like if we're thinking about the worst of people and the poor, they rely, if they are to make, have an income, they rely on the businesses and the jobs that are created through the investment of the richest people. Right. Um, and if you scare these people, scare these people's money away, it's not going to be the rich that suffer. It's going to be the poor that suffer. Like you think like, Oh, I'm going to inc increase, I introduce a tax code that is going to make, it's going to make them pay more taxes. And, -ha -ha -ha. and they're going to suffer like this much. And we're like, okay, I guess I don't like investing in this country anymore. And they're going to be like, Oh, I, I guess I won't be able to get my third mansion, but the poor who are not going to have the jobs from the investment that they were bringing in, they're going to suffer the most. Right. So again, this is not going to sound popular because again, it seems like, Oh, we have to like appease. Like we have to like be like, Oh, please rich people, please, please keep your money so we can eat. And it just sounds so bad. But if it effectively ends up being like that, you shouldn't care about the fact that it sounds bad. Right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Like it, this is, uh, but this is why some people organizations, are trying to introduce a global tax standard <laughs> and mm -hmm. this is scary and and this is scaring a whole bunch of rich people where you going oh um i was just gonna say that there's also a whole lot more to these pandora papers like there there's so many stories within stories because there were like over 12 million documents so there are so many different stories going on across the world i think it becomes an even bigger problem when they um start to look at the financial dealings of what's the word for it like um basically like politically sanctioned people and that gets really muddy and that's a whole different story then there's the story of what's happening with the king of jordan and his investments and like then his resulting like censorship that's going on like um <clears throat> i think there's going to be so many different findings that we continue to learn about as all these documents are dug into further and further. There's so many different stories, but um, we've spent quite a bit of time on that question. So let's move uh, wait, to the next one. I, I want to answer one more thing, okay, about this. Question. I want to acknowledge the mainstream media and the journalists who are responsible for getting these information out, because I feel like mainstream media and journalists are constantly being attacked and unfair. Like, and these like YouTuber, YouTube streamers, like. People who do what we do and other like, they're like, oh, mainstream media is lying to you. And while they like relying on all this information that is coming from people who are actually doing journalism. And, you know, like, I just want us to like appreciate, not constantly attack mainstream media, but appreciate how much effort and how much journalism and how much risk they take 
to get us this information that the rest of us are just sitting and commenting on, right? They are doing the, they are at the front lines and they're doing the, the, the work that needs to be done. And especially with this Pandora Papers, these are journalists who went and got this right after we know, like, what happened to the journalist that was responsible for the Panama Papers? Do you know? No. Her car exploded. She died. They, ex they, they assassinated her. Okay. Yeah, so she she there was a car bomb and she died. Um and these journalists after that were like, okay, we're doing the same thing, even though that's what happened to the last person who decided to leak information about the rich and powerful. So I mean, these people need to be thanked. Okay. So just remember that the next time somebody says, like, don't trust mainstream media. Again, you shouldn't trust the mainstream media, but the mainstream media is not just one entity. Okay, there are many different people. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. Just look at the people, look at the information that is being presented to you and be skeptical about it. But don't be ungrateful to all these people that are bringing us this information. The people who are complaining about the mainstream media, they themselves are not at the front lines. They're not in Syria, they're not in Iraq. They're not doing this investigative journalism, trying to get all this information out there. These people are not even making that much money, okay? These people's salaries are very low and yet they are they are giving us all the information that we rely on for democracy, for peace, for, for activism. So be a little bit grateful. Yeah. Okay. Bootlicker for the rich and the media class today. Yeah. <laughs> Atheist Republic needs your help. We've been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Ababi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.